So yesterday, Speaker Freak 95 paid me a visit and relieved me of a big uh, ADM 24 channel audio mixing console that, that came from a TV station. I had originally picked it up with plans of using, using it in my little Part 15 AM station, but the thing was about five feet long, and I so said that's a little bit overkill, so better to pass it along to someone who can use it. So he came and picked it up yesterday along with some more goodies I had for him and he brought me some things. So let's see what all he brought me. First we have a B&K 465 CRT tester and rejuvenator. I think this one was made in either 69 or 70 but they made these for several years. This will test the older black and white and color CRTs. And he told me he had a box of adapters that, for this thing that would test more tubes that he would ship me. Kind of brings back memories for me because the first CRT tester I ever owned was back around 1990 or so and it was this particular model given to me by a TV shop that no longer used it. And I used it until I found a newer tester with a more gentle rejuvenate function. Yeah, the rejuvenate function on this one is kind of crude, but and you have to be very careful when using it, but it's good for testing the older black and white and color picture tubes. Next, we have a Simpson 260 analog multimeter. Now, this is pretty much the standard as far as multi analog meters go. And we used these when I took electronics in high school and college. This one's got an issue with the meter movement, but worst case scenario, I think I have another one of these meters, so if I have to take the two and make one, then that's what I'll do. And we have this pink Zenith AM portable tube radio. It runs off of either batteries or AC from around 57 or 58. This was one of Zenith's last tube portables besides the transoceanics. Here's the inside of the radio as you might expect wired on a metal chassis. And next we have a Conar tube tester model 224. This is just a standard emission tube tester that was offered by NRI, National Radio Institute. This particular model was made in 74 according to date codes I found inside. And this will pretty much test any tube from the old prong tubes of the 20s all the way on up to Compactron TV tubes of the 1970s. I think he said he found this in a pile of garbage close to his house. It's amazing what people throw out. Here's something kind of interesting. This is a new tone wall radio from I think the early 1990s. Also contains a built-in cassette player. And you might recognize the name New Tone as the ones who made the house intercom systems. I didn't really know they were making these that late, but here it is. This model requires 16 volts AC to operate has a phono input as well as a line output jack. I don't yet know if the phono input is magnetic or ceramic, but we'll find that out soon enough. Next we have a Sankyo, S-A-N-K-Y-O, stereo cassette deck made in Japan in a wooden case, probably from the early to mid 70s. Looks like a nice unit. Next we have an RCA Voltomist WV77E uh, vacuum tube voltmeter. I'd say this is probably from the early 70s since it uses the RCA block logo. I think this this instrument was later marketed under the Viz name once Viz bought out the test equipment division of RCA. Next we have a Precision Model 920 set tester and actually what this is is a standard tube tester and a, and a bolt ohm meter all built into the same case. This originally had no 9 pin miniature tube socket but there's an adapter in here that will allow this unit to test 
nine pin miniature tubes and judging by the old power cord and the type of plug that's on it I'd say this unit's probably from the late 1930s and this will be handy for testing the older tubes from the 20s and 30s that some of the newer testers won't test and next we have the power amplifier module out of an audio mixing console might find something clever to do with that and then we have a couple of tractor radios, AM radios from the 70's and then we have a little 9 inch quasar color TV that runs on AC or DC and has video input jacks okay I think that's about it and I'd like to thank, thank Speaker Freak 95 for, for bringing me this stuff and for taking that board off of my hands, you really helped me out in the space department by getting that thing out of here and I certainly hope you can get some use out of it and the other stuff that I loaded you up with okay let's see if this little television set will do anything well, heard something well, we have a raster Yeah, I bet that would work just fine if we connected a converter to it. And we have this old Spartan black and white TV that I know the tubes are dud in, so why don't we connect the B&K CRT tester to it and see what kind of reaction we get. Okay, this is a 17 BP4, set the filament to 6.3, G2 to 300, and the G1 cutoff range should be between 22 and 72. Testing for shorts, there are none. Read emission, cutoff, and it's basically dead. Okay, we have nothing to lose, so we'll set it to the dynamic intensifier low position. Hit the button. Flip it back and see if we have any emission now. We have none. Now if we crank the filament up to 8.4 volts, we get a little emission. And when I bumped it up to the next level, it came up briefly and then jumped right back down again. But yeah, we had already tried to rejuvenate this tube on the newer tester and it did no good, so... This is one of those TVs that if I restore it at all, I'm basically just getting enough emission out of the CRT to, to uh, see where we're going with the rest of the chassis until I can find another 17 BP4 to put in here. I'm actually not even sure the rejuvenate function is working on this CRT because usually I can notice sparks flying around in the neck when I hit the button and I'm not noticing that, that on this. so. It could be the cathode is so contaminated that it's not going to arc. Well, I hit the button a few more times and I saw an arc in the neck of the tube and now the emission's staying up. Do I think it's going to stay up very long? No, I don't. But maybe it'll stay up long enough at least to get the rest of the chassis working when that time comes. Okay, once again, I'd like to thank Speaker Freak 95 for all these new toys to play with, and we'll call it a day on this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and more to come later. Okay, we're not quite finished with this video yet. A friend of mine who repaired TVs several years ago called and offered to give me all of his test equipment. Now, I remember when he had this stuff back in the 90s and early 2000s. I think he got out of TV repair in 2000 or 2001. This is all Senco equipment, and I think he paid several thousand dollars for all this stuff. And I remember he, he offered to give it to me when he got out of the business and, and 
and I couldn't I couldn't accept it because I knew what he paid for the stuff and I just felt like that was too much well he called today and asked me again he said this stuff's just sitting in storage I'm not going to use it and I know you'll probably get some use out of it so if you want it you can have it so I agreed to take him and thanked him many times for it but anyway the first piece is this Syncor power right which is a variable uh, AC power supply and isolation transformer also has a leakage tester in it as well and then we have this TVA 92 video analyzer that pretty much provides various signals for troubleshooting a television as well as has a flyback and yoke tester built in and then we have another universal video analyzer that also provides RF output, IF output, audio signals, various color patterns. Has ringing tests for flybacks and yokes. Also provides drive signals for vertical and sweep circuits. It even has a tube horizontal drive setting, so that will come in handy when working on these vintage sets that I work on. And then we have this 80 megahertz waveform analyzer, aka oscilloscope. It has a digital readout on it for frequency and voltage. I'll probably put this unit in place of my B&K oscilloscope that I currently use. And he also gave me a pile of manuals and stuff that go with this equipment, as well as a box of probes and other parts. Yeah, I think I can put this stuff to good use, and it's very much appreciated. Okay, there you go, my, my new toys for the weekend. Thanks for watching, and more to come later.